good afternoon to everybody our today session is data processing this is the unit 8 so in our unit 4 5 6 and 7 we are discussing about what is research how to collect the data what is questionnaire designing how to collect the data what is sampling and sampling design but after that after collection of data how to process your data so this is very very important where you analyze your data for your research work so today's session what are your learning objectives now discuss about the data processing describe the details of data editing coding classification and tabulation and how to prepare the graph from the data that is how to analyze your data through the graphical method so now first we are discussing about what is data processing data processing is the collection and translation of the data set into the valuable usable information through this process a researcher data engineer and data scientist takes raw data and convert it into a more readable uh, format such as graph report chart either manually or through the automated tool the researchers will take and use this information to again insight solve the problems make improvements and you ultimately generate better results so our aim is that when you collect the data or after data collection through the various sources how to solve the your data and how to find out the new result or new investigations so at, at the time what happened that when you collect the data this data is called the raw data we have to get the raw data and we have to interpret the data and we have to analyze the data so this is the process is called data processing that means again i am discussing about this one data processing data is a raw data we have to process it how to process it and how can you find out the result of your investigation of your research work and this is called the data processing so there are various type of process are there directly you cannot take the data for the analysis for that cases what happened now we have to use so many uh, process one process is data editing data coding data classification and tabulation. after that you have to analyze your data so now what is your data editing last classes last last classes also i am discussing that directly raw data we cannot go for the analysis so we have to edit it what is the editing that is first we have discussed what is the editing data editing is a set step in the preparation of statistics the goal of which is to improve the quality of the statistical information those information we are collecting from the respondents or from the markets or from the uh, people's various sources so at that time what happened first you have to prepare this data or raw data and, uh, to convert it to your analyze of data so that means what happened that directly you cannot interpret or take the data as per your questionnaire given to the respondent so that means what happened now suppose that the example is when you are collecting your data from your respondent through the questionnaire suppose first one is i am discussing the questionnaire method that is uh, that is demographic information in demographic information what happened now we are mentioning that after your name what is your age or age group age group one is 20 one is 40 one is 60 so directly we cannot take these values in the data set so how what will do now we have to convert it, this data for your coding next class is coding coding is what happened now in that case is what happened if you are collecting your data that is 10 to age group 10 to 20 so you should put one the coding is one one means your age group the value is 10 to 20 the groups similar 20 to 30 you make it 2 30 to 40 you make 3 40 to 50 you make 4 more than 50 you take 5 so this is called editing editing means in the basis of code code means let's tell we are writing coding coding is what happened now it is next classes we have discussing coding coding is the process combining the data for themes idea and categories and then making the similar process to text with the code level this is the level of the data so in here what happened 
Now, when you are taking your data, you will edit it. At that time, you have to call, you have to collect the information that all the data should be same manner or not. If same, if there is no same manner, you have to edit it or you have to manipulate it. Then you have to take your data to the tabulation. So for that cases, what happened? Now, before you enter your data in the tabular form, that means editing means what happened? Now, when you are entry and en enter your data in a tabular form. At that time, we have to see that whether your data is right or wrong. Is not right, you have to edit it. Similarly, data you have to edit it, especially when they relate to responses to open-ended questions of interview and questionnaire or unstructured observation. When you are taking your uh, what is uh, that is unstructured questionnaire or the open-ended questionnaire, so we are we are not mentioning any coding or any interval basis because there is no questions at all. So we have to prepare, make a questions, and after that you have to give the code. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. All the numerical. Because when you are analyze your data in your SPSS package or any statistical tools, at that time only they have received, or they will the machine will take only the numerical values. There is no alphabet. There is no words there. So that's why what happened. Now before you enter your data to your table or this is called the excel format table means excel format in that cases only you have to put the value on the numerical values and you have to mention that 1 4 suppose 10 to 20 as group 2 4 22 to 30 as group 3 4 32 40 as group 4 4 42 50 as group and 5 is more than 50 as group so this is editing so what is the reason now for consistency completeness uniformity and accuracy for these four categories or four data, four, this is reason for the data editing. The four points are there. One is data consistency should be required, completeness should be required, uniformity and accuracy. If data is not uniform, we cannot analyze your data. If your data is not complete, you cannot analyze your data. If your data is not consistent, you cannot analyze data. If your data is not accurate, also you cannot analyze your data. So for that cases, what happened? Where you were going for the editing, or what is the reason behind the editing? Now for data consistency, data completeness, data uniformity, and data accuracy. This is very very important. Then what is the objective of data editing? To ensure the accuracy of the data. Data accuracy should be required. If data accuracy is not happening, then what problem is that? Now we have lacking or we have facing the problem when you are going for data analysis to using the any statistical techniques or you other techniques also. To establish the consistency of the data, to establish the consistency of data means all the data in the same manner. To determine whether data is complete or not, you have to find out that. To ensure the co correctness of aggregated data and to obtain the best possible data available. That means what happened? Now when you are editing your data, you have to find out that all data are available or not. If data are not available, you have to edit it, then you have to interpret it. Similarly, coding. Coding is a process combining the data for them, the theme, themes, idea, and categories, and then making similar passages to text with the code level so that they can easily to be uh, re retrieved at a later stage for further comparison and analysis. So in here, what happened? Now, when you are coding here your data, data means, I am given an example, age group, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I were given this, uh, that is, uh, 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 what is, uh, coding in your Excel sheets, and at the time you have to put what is for 1, what is for 2, what is for 3, and what is for 4, what is for 5. Accordingly, when you go for the analysis, the analysis, uh, either you can go for any software or any techniques, immediately they can give the exact result as for your coding. Suppose that, now we have collected, uh, one uh, 200 data from the uh, from the respondents. So the respondents, we have to know that how many data belongs to the age group 10 to 20, how many data belongs to 20 to 30, how many data belongs to more than 50, or how many data belongs to 10 to 20. If you are putting as per the coding, then automatically directly they are giving the what is the data point is given. How many how many age group given how many data? Suppose 1 to 10, it is given 20, 10 to 20, given 40, 40, 30 to 40, it is given 70. So accordingly, they have given the figure or they have given the graph. So as per your requirement, you can find out the graph method or pie chart method. This is the graphical method, dependence of data, required method that we are discussing. So accordingly, they will give it. 
coding the data makes it easier to source the data to make comparison and identify any pattern that requires further investigation so if your coding is correct then any type of investigation you can do it any type of solution you can find out any type of analysis you can do it so that's why what happened now coding is very very important if coding is not in the right manner then it is difficult to do because software they are what is in software in software what happened now as per your inputs they are given the outputs if your inputs is wrong outputs always 100% wrong it output is wrong a solution you cannot find out the solution so that's why what happened now coding makes easier to make a further investigation coding technique cross sectional techniques non cross sectional sectional techniques these two techniques generally we are using in your software or in your statistical analysis for data analysis consistent ah uh, some lean across all patterns and themes sometimes this is given in your uh, software or you can say when you analyze your data so at the time this wording they are giving there just you have to click it and non cross sectional simply descriptive part different uh, lenses uh, descriptiveness case studies or narratives what you want to do it question is that the coding techniques when you are using say what what exactly you want to do it so accordingly you have to give the this is what this is the uh, uh, what is uh, person it is given but this is the activities given in your uh, statistical techniques when you are using the software accordingly you can use this one it is a cross sectional techniques or it is a non cross sectional techniques when you are using this one you are using for your case study analysis or you are using for different uh, lenses or you are using for your patterns or you are using for your consistent system across all the data so what you want to do it so accordingly you have to coding techniques that is you are given and what are the approach of the starting coding previous research or theory previous research the when you are doing your any research work at that time you have to find out that what should be your literature review because when you are doing your research work first you have to find out that whether your research work is logically accepted or not hypothetically it is true or not when you are doing your research work always we are taking the null hypothesis suppose that this is accepted so accordingly what happen now when you are taking your uh, this objective of your research work always you will go for the previous theory or your the previous research according to previous research and previous theory you have to prepare your research objectives and you have to prepare your research hypothesis and according to the objective hypothesis you have to prepare your questionnaire and according to questionnaire you are going for your data analysis a yeah, data collection so data collection when you are going for data collection it should be proper proper through the questionnaire research or evaluation questions you are addressing questions and topics of your interview should you you got a feeling about the data and the setting or the setting so that means what i mean now accordingly when you are going for the coding system or you are, where you are using the coding system of your research work so at that time as for the data you have to go for coding after data collection but when you are going for data collection at that time you have to also make the coding not the issue is there or after data collection when you are interpreting your data to your excel sheet then at that time is coding is essential so that means what happened now as for the paper research as for the evaluation of your research work as for the questions uh when you are asking to the respondents everywhere you want to start your coding then another part is classification classification is very very important so because if class you are not classify accordingly then there is a problem data classification in the context of information security is the classification of data based on its level of sensitivity and the impact of the infosecurity should that data be disclosed alter or destroyed without author, uh, authorization the classification means which type of data is required in which type of analysis you have classified because what about now when you are uh, uh, collecting your data through the questionnaire so at that time what happen there are various sections are there one is demographic profile one is section wise section a section b section c and section d so in this section wise what happen the first you have to find out that <coughs> the which type of data is required in which type of analysis if you are analyze your data for the demographic variables so you cannot use this data in section a or section b demographic variables you know what happened now you have to find out that how many male and female respondent are uh, answering your question here so male and female uh, data set it is available in demographic profile if this is you cannot the other sections so that means what happened in here suppose you have to find out that how many age group students or how many age group people they are answering our question 
<coughs> so this is a deputy profile. How many uh, uh, investigators or how many responsible are uh, service holder? Or how many volumes are business holder? Or how many persons are uh, respondents are others? So you can find out from the demographic profile. Similarly, sex, similarly, sex, they are male or female like this, or they are married or unmarried like this. But because uh, income group also income, how many in which type of income group are, are, are given the answer of the your questionnaire? So at the time, what happened? Now we have to define your questionnaire and you have to define your data. Now, where you are going for data analysis, how many male and female they are given answer their question. That means your data should be only male female. Income source, only the income source. Other, other data you cannot implement in here. The classification of data help determine what baseline security controls are appropriate for safeguarding the data. So that means <coughs> when you are analyzing your data, which data set is required as per your analysis. So for that cases, the classification is required. <coughs> so what is your objective of classification of data? To group heterogeneous data under the homogeneous group of common characteristics, to facilitate similarity of various group, to facilitate effective comparison, to present complex hazard and staccato data of concise, logical, homogeneous and intelligible form, to maintain clarity and simplicity of the complex data, to identify independent and dependent variables and establish their relationship, to establish a coercive nature of the diverse data for effective and logical analysis, to make logical and effective quantification. Because in here, what happened? So when we are analyzing your data, so what is the implementation or what is the objective of the classification of data? So when you are going for the analysis of your data after editing and coding, so at that time, we have to find out that what is the level of data is given or what type of variable is given. Generally, what happens when you are going to the research work, either you can for educational research or your social research or any research. At that time, always you find out that at the analysis cases, there are two types of variables are there. One is independent variable and another is dependent variable. When you are analyzing your data, Dependent variable first you have to find out who are the dependent variables. For example, suppose that. So you have to find out how to develop your quality education in your organization. So at that time, what is your dependent variable? Now develop the quality education. This is dependent variable, uh, independent variable. But how it is dependent? Now dependent of the educational process. What is the educational process? Now quality teaching quality materials, facilities, what is facilities? Library lab facilities or library facilities and then what is placement facilities. So everything should be there. So these are is called the independent variables. Independent variables is very, very important to find out the solution where it is required. That means required for the dependent variable. So quality education is depending on the four or five components or the independent variables. Only one variable you cannot find out the uh, results. So dependent variable is very, very important you have to find out. For example, I am giving one example. So what will be the next two or three years demand of our product? Suppose I am, I am, I am the FMCG company. So we are preparing some product. What will be the demand of our product after two years or three years? So at the time, how will you find out? So you have to use the technique, statistical techniques generally or time series techniques or regression analysis we can use or time series techniques, so many forecasting techniques are available. In the forecasting technique, what happened? Now one is dependent and other is independent, variables are there. And dependent variable is what? Now predict the next two years demand. And what is the independent variables? After that in there. The, what is the independent variables? Now this is the production, of production the machinery and equipments, the facilities, workplace. So these are called the inputs or you can say in statistically, these are called the independent variables. And another one is investment is very, very important part is there. So, the independent. so according to the independent variables, if you are using this one, then only you can, it is possible that you can find out the uh, next year prediction, next two year prediction by the help of 
time series analysis or you can say that forecasting techniques or you can the regression model so you can use there and you can find out so for that case is what happened now independent variable dependent variable is very very important so classification data means which data belongs to independent variable and which data belongs to dependent variable you have to calculate so many education organization what happened when you are developing one model for a research work or you want to find out the new investigation at that time always you are depending on the two variables one is independent variables and another one is dependent variables this is very very important then to establish a comprehensive nature for the diverse data for effective and logical analysis logical analysis means what happened now when you are using your data for your classification so at that time you have to find out that logically it will be accepted if logically it is not true then that means 100 percent true that you cannot get the right answer or you cannot do the right analysis of your data to make logical and effective quantification and also your data always quantify this is not qualitative always the quantitative so that means what happened logically it is that means what happened now when you are using when you are doing your research work in any places or anywhere so at that time when you select your topics for your research work at that time you have to find out that whether your topic is right or not logically it is accepted or not hypothetically it is true or not similarly in here also when you are taking your data from the respondents first you have to find out that classify that whether data is logically it is accepted or not or it is quantified or not yes or not then <coughs> another part is very very important this is called the tabulation Tabulation means what? After editing, after coding and classification, then you will go for the tabulation. Tabulation means you put your data in your Excel format. Excel format, you, you open your Excel sheet, Excel sheet 1, 2, various columns is there, and in each column, you have to use the each questions and you put it. How can you put it? Suppose question number 1. Question number 1 is what is the gender? Male or female? So you write gender. Male 1, female 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. When male, you have to put 1. When female, you have to put 2. So accordingly, you have to put, suppose your data is 500. So accordingly, you have to put 1, to 1, to up to 500. You have to use. Similarly, income group. Suppose the income group, you are taking the age group uh, from 10 to 20, the uh, coding is 1. 20 to 30, the 2. 30 to 40, this is 3. 40 to 50, this is 4. 50 to 60, this is 5. So accordingly, you have to put in this Excel sheet. If 10 to 20, you put 1. 20 to 30, you put 2. 30 to 40, you put 3. 40 to 50, you put 4. And 50 to above, so you put 5. So accordingly, you have to put the five, uh, 500 data. So accordingly, for each question, suppose you have the in question there, you have 20 questions, that means your 20 column, you have to put it. One is demography, section A. Then, as per your body of your research work, so you can put the data. Yes or no? So, in that cases, what happened? Now, only after putting your data, then only you can interpret your data in your tabular form. So, tabulation refers to the systematic arrangement of the information in a row and columns. In simple words, tabulation is a layout of figure rectangular form with appropriate heading to explain different rows and different columns. The main purpose of the table is to simplify the presentation and facilitate comparison. So when you tabulate your data in the tabular form, then after that graphically you can represent it or you can go for the analysis for your better solution. This is our purpose. Why we need the tabulation? A tabulation required when you prepare your data for the present or for the presentation. Presentation means in kind of graphical presentation or in, 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 in term of uh, quantitative analysis. So at that time, easily we can do it. For that cases, after coding and editing of your data and classification of data, then you go for the tabulation to present your data uniformly. Okay. The, <coughs> what are the type of tabulation? Either simple table, double table, or complex table. There are so many tables are there. One way tabulation, two way tabulation, or more than two way tabulation. So this is depending nature of the data you have to tabulate it. Row wise, column wise, only the row wise. Some row is more, some layer, column is less. But it is a rectangular form always. Data should be when used. Maybe row is more, maybe less, row is less. There is no problem. But always data should be used but when you are going for the tabulation. At times some row wise there, some column wise data should be there. Yes or no? So this is required. So one simple and uh, tabulation is what? 
when the data are tabulated to one characteristic, it is said to be a simple tabulation or one-way tabulation. Only one characteristic, suppose only the gender. Double tabulation, when the data are tabulated according to two characteristics, suppose gender and income, the two characteristics and you put the double. This is a two-way clock tabulation. If more than data is given, then this is called the complex tabulation. When the data are tabulated according to many characteristics, it's said to be a complex tabulation. So generally when the resource value is there, so according to the characteristics, we have to use the table, either simple table or double table or your complex table. Clear or not? Then we are discussing how to present your data. So after tabulation or after interpretation of the data, the interpretation means what happened? Now first one is editing, then second one is coding, third one is classification and fourth one tabulation. Then is called the data interpretation. Interpretation in the Excel format. After that, how we have to present it. So after interpretation of your data, or how to process your data in the tabular form, then only you will go for the analysis. Analysis in terms of what happened, now the two types of analysis we are, we are presentation we are required. One is graphical representation and another is statistical representation. Statistical representation means what happened? Like graphically, you have to show your data, you have to present your data, and easily you can understand this one. And another is analysis techniques, if your statistical analysis you are taking, so many techniques are there, some other is what is parametric test, non-parametric test, so many tests are there. In the basis of test, you can analyze your data, so many uh, process or algorithms are there. You have to use this algorithm or use the techniques, so either SPSS or statistical techniques, some practical, a software is there, C start is there. Uh, now, uh, what happened? You can use now in presently the very, very important data is AI machine learning. Also, you can use there and you can find out the data. But in here, what happened? Now, first, we are discussing about the data presentation, how to present it. Then, after that, we are discussing about the statistical analysis or any other quantitative analysis. So, first one is graphical presentation. A graph refers to the plotting of different values of the variables on a graph paper which gives the movement or a change in the variable over a period of time. Diagrams can represent or can present the data attractive style, but still there is a method more reliable than this. Diagrams are often used for publicity purposes, but are not much used in statistical analysis. Hence, graphic presentation is more effective and result oriented. That means what happened in your argument? Now, when you collect the data, this is a draw data, and if you are present it, suppose you give an example that, so what is the uh, number of male and female data you are collecting the data. So graphically you have to show it the male 10, female 20. So if graphically you take, graphically it is given that male 20, female 10. So easily you can understand and this is result oriented. What are the rules and construction of the graph? <clears throat> Every graph must a suitable title which should be clearly convey the idea the graph contains the property. When you are graphically you are representation, so what is the construction, what is the rules of construction of the graph we are discussing now. The graph must suit the size of the paper. As per paper, in between the paper you have to prepare the graph, not outside of the graph papers. The scale of the graph <coughs> should be in even numbers or in multiples. Footnotes should be given at the bottom of the illustrate the main points above the graph. Graph should be as simple and as possible. In order to show many items in the graph, index identification should be given. If you are giving the more graph or more size, later on we are discussing one by one, then you should put the name. A graph should be neat and clean and should be appearing uh, to the eyes. Every graph should be given with a table to ensure whether the data has been presented accurately or not. The test of good graph depends on the case which the ob uh, observer can interpret it. Thus, the economy in the cost and energy should be exercised during the graph. So, when that means the entire construction of the graph is that now it should be clear, it should be as per the size of the paper, and it should be uh, what is it? the footnotes it should be given, and it should be simple and possible. It should be simple and don't go for many items in the graph. If you will give the many items, it should be mentioned the below the graph. So this is the construction of the graph. That means what happened? Now it will be easily understand understand by the expert. Yes, so now <coughs> the checklist. What is the checklist? Now what makes a good graph? So you have to first find out. Have you selected the appropriate graph type of the data? 
you, you are displaying yes or no you have to question you are asking the question to you if yes it is good does your graph have a title yes or no if yes it is good if no so you have to put your titles have you placed the independent variable on the x axis and the dependent variable on the y axis because when you put the graph there are two axes there one is y axis one is x axis so always x axis is the independent variable and y axis always the dependent variable as per the uh, x y axis two axis cases because y axis always the dependent variable and x axis always the independent variable whether you are taking or not because after you graphing prepare the graph If this should be mandatory. If you are not mentioning this one, so we cannot understand what you are taking. Have you labeled the axis correctly and specify the unit measurement? Label of the graph. Label of the graph is axis. It will be correct or not. Suppose that sometime you are taking x axis to y axis and y axis to x axis. Then it is wrong. Your concept is right. Your interpretation is right. But your concept is wrong. In initial concept is wrong because as per the graphical method. Always you are taking y is a dependent variable, x is a independent variable. But if you are changing this one, x is dependent dependent variable, y is independent variable. Then it is wrong. Does your graph have the proper scale or a proper high and low value of the axis? Proper scaling you are taking. That is in x-axis you are giving the ten point scale, and y-axis if you are taking the five point scale, then it is wrong. So the proper axis proper uh, that is what is uh, the uh, values. You have to take the both the axes. Is your data plotted correctly and clearly? Yes or no. So first, you have to asking this question to you before you prepare your graph. So this is called the checklist, and accordingly you have to prepare the graph. Then type of diagrams. So after you prepare the graph, this is what this is a diagram. So how can you prepare the diagram? So there are so many diagrams are there. First, we are discussing about the bar diagram. Bar diagrams are commonly used to show the number of proportion of nominal or ordinal data which possess particular attribute. The depict the frequency of each category of the data points as bar rising vertically from the horizontal axis. Bar diagram most often represents the number of observation in the given category, such as the number of people sampled falling into the given income or ethnic group. They can be used to show the proportion of the source data point, but The pie chart is more commonly used for this purpose. Bar diagrams are especially good for showing how nominal data changes over the time. So that means what happens now when you are using the bar diagram. So at that time, what happens now? You have to take the proper data points and the bar diagram to the vertical. Yes, sir. So for example, I am giving for example in here. So have, there are four type of bar diagram. One is simple bar diagram, double bar diagram, divided bar diagram, and multiple bar diagram. So, how can you use these data sets and to prepare the diagram? One by one, we are discussing. First one is simple bar diagram. Listen in here. The example is given: <coughs> the classes and the number of students. The classes A is uh, this 22, class I X section B is 26, and section C is 30, and section C is 40 students. Is it not number of students? The forty students, and they are securing the marks. Suppose it is given. Suppose the marks is given, then how can you write? Now your x-axis which one? Your x-axis is section section A, section B, section C, section C. Suppose they are securing marks. Now section A twenty-two, section B average marks. Suppose securing twenty-two, and section B average mark is twenty-six, section C average mark thirty, section D average mark forty. How can you plot the graph? The first graph you will see that the section A, section B, section C. So which one? Now this number, section Y axis values, 22, 26, 20, 30, 40. 40. These are the dependent to whom whom na classes. Similarly, you can get class A. The value is 22. Class B value is 26. Class C but uh, value is 20, uh, 30. Class D value is 40. So first figure is one type of bar diagram, and second one is one type of bar diagram. Both two you can do it, no problem. Section A, this I will see one diagram, and this type of diagram, diagram is called the simple diagram. This is called the simple bar diagram. For example, is next example is that double bar diagram. So we are taking a class X A, then section A, section B, section C, section D, the girls marks, students marks, and boys student marks. 
So in here, what happened? You take it. The girls, how many girls and how many boys? We can make a graph. And how many boys and graphs? A suppose A is equal to boys, uh, B is equal to graph. It is given. Or these two, uh, the first is uh, this is a uh, one is a, uh, uh, what is the uh, sky color one uh, bar, and that is uh, stress or light draw a line or a, a angle line is there, and, and this is another one. So A is what ten. B is 12. It is given in section A. In section B, similarly, we can put in here 26 and 20. Section C, we are putting C2. And section D, we are putting uh, 16 and 24. So, this type of part is called the double bar diagram. That means two data set is available in this diagram. First one is what happened? Only one data set is given. But in this example, the two data set is given. So, for that case, this is called the double bar diagram. Similarly, in example 3, divided bar diagram means, means we have divided it. After girls, then boys, or after boys, then girls. We are taking in here, after boys, after girls, then we are taking boys. Because the sky color is girls, then after that this is boys. That means first you take the 10 girls, then 12, we can take the boys. A total is 22. Similarly, in section B or IXB classes, First, we are taking the sky color is 26, girls 26, then we are taking the 20, total is 46. So, similarly C and similarly D. So, in here what happened, when you are taking this diagram, at a time you have to mention that, this is footnotes you can say that, or you have to give that, boys means this color, this bar color, and girls means this bar color, this color. So, you have to put in here, and this type of diagram is called divided bar diagram. And another one is multiple bar diagram. More than two data is given. Then this is called the multiple bar diagram. That means what happened? Now suppose census here is given. Person 18 uh, in, in 1951, 61, 71, 81, 91, 21. Data is given. Person uh, that is male, this is given. Female, this is given. Total person is 18. Male is 27. Female is 9. So in that basis, uh, you have to follow the data. That means if when you are preparing your bar diagram, how many variables is there? Three, one is person, one is male, one is female. So in the accordingly what happened, when you are taking in 1951, so you take thin, one is person, one is male, one is female. First one is person, second one is male, third one is female. Accordingly, 61 we have to do three, 71 we have to do three, 81 we have to do three, 91 we have to do three, and 2021 also you can take three. And below, we have to take the year, and because y, here is the y axis, x is the person, male, and female. So, in here, what happened? Uh, in here, uh, 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 that is, axis is what is now in, in 1951. We have to find out that what will be the person, what will be the male, and what will be the female. So, it will be displayed in three bar first one is person, second one is male, and second, third one is female. Uh, it is given mentioned in y-axis below census here person male and female it is mentioned so this type of type of diagram is called multiple bar diagram we can take more than two three four five six and many but if you are taking too many that is very difficult to represent the bar diagram so that's why as per the visibility you take the values and this value is uh, this type of figure or this type of value is given if more than two data is given then this type of diagram is called the multiple bar diagram Clear or not? Then another one is very very important. This is called the histograms. Histograms are the preferred method for graphing group interval data. That means this data classification is given. Interval is given 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 10, 20, 20 to 25, and frequency is given. Frequency means what happened? Now interval is 0 0.5 and frequency is 4. So that means what happened in here when you are taking the uh, values, class interval and frequency. Class interval always lies between your x-axis and frequency always you are taking in your y-axis. You see that in the graph, first we are taking class interval which axis? x-axis. And you are taking frequency which axis? y-axis. 5. That means the corner point it should be 0. 0 to 5. What is the value? Value is 4. So we have to make a graph in, bar, in one bar. Similarly, 5 to 10. What is the value? 10 make a graph bar, then 10 to 15, what is the 
values is 18. This is a bar diagram. This is one bar. Similarly, 15 to 20 is a bar and 20 to 25 in another bar. Yes or no? So if this were you are representing, then this diagram is called the histogram. Right? Another example I am giving. <coughs> Wages and frequency. Say so another, this is judgment sampling, this is not exactly, this is a bar diagram. Mistake, we are writing this one. So in here, what happened? Now, wages is given 50.5 to 60.5, 60.5 to 70.5, 70.5 to 80.5, 80.5 to 90.5, 90.5 to 100.5, and 100.5 to 110.5. So in here, what happened? From 0 to 15.5, there is no bar because the data is not given. Data given from where? Now, 15.5 to 60.5. So 15.65 is for make a graph. 60.5 to 70.5, we make a graph. 70.5 to 80.5, make a graph. 80.5 to 90.5, make a graph. Similarly, 90.5 to 100.5, 100.5, 110.5. So when you are making, when you are preparing the histogram, at the time, what happened? The interval should be same. Yes or no? All interval should be what happened? Now, if one interval should be 50.5 to 60.5, second interval should be starting from 60.5. Yes or no? And fourth one is, suppose 60.5 to 80.5 you are taking, then it should be started from 80.5. Then this type of diagram is called the uh, histogram. Then another one is line graph. Line graph, all of you know that in the axis you are taking the point and adding the each point, make a line. This is called the graph. Line graph uses a single line to connect plotted points of interval and at item nominal data. Suppose biscuits, the 75% demand. Ice cream, suppose 95% uh, uh, demand or like, likes. Chocolate likes 65%. Cold drinks like 95%. Suppose you are going for one survey, uh, from their survey, so you will find out that what is the liking of the product of our organization. So how can you find out? So you collect the information from the product biscuits, from the product ice cream, from the product chocolate, and from the product cold drinks. So in biscuits, what happened? Like 75%. So in these cases, what happened? The variables in the x-axis and percentage we can take in the y-axis. 75% biscuit, 95% ice cream, 75% uh, 65% chocolate, 94% cold drinks. Make a line from the each point and this line is called the line graph. Other way also we can do the line graph like this because data is given from the data after that you line graph because one is a bar diagram one is line graph according to the point also you can do it suppose product a product b product c month is given rainfall the temperature c rainfall so rainfall uh, which uh, month what should be the rainfall that rainfall january february march april may june july august september october november december so this is the graph the bar diagram also one is temperature we can take it and another one is rainfall we are taking that is one the temperature one is which one uh, the bar is taking the temperature, uh, rainfall, and uh, but uh, line graph we, we are taking the temperature. So in this type of also line graph you can also use, you can also do it. Then this is a very very important when uh, we are using when uh, you, are, you we are doing your research work. So maximally when you are going for the graphical representation, so these three diagrams should be more more important. Uh, one is bar diagram. One is line graph and another one is pie chart or pie graph, you can say that. So pie chart are circles subdivided into a number of slices. The area of each depends the relative proportion data points falling into a given category. Pie charts are the preferred method for graphing both nominal data and percentages. Yes or no? So in your pie diagram, what happened? Generally, pie diagram we are calculating with the percentages, how many percentages in which objects. Suppose in here we are taking one is television, one is newspaper, one is LX. So three products is given or three type of objects we are taking. So which one should be what the percentage? Television is how many percentage in here? A television is 45%. Newspaper is how many percent? 40%. Yelling is how many percent? 50%. Because easily you can see the figure and you draw your conclusion. 
is enough. So the fact that similarly, but with this chart, why you are using in your research work? Now, instantly, immediately, you can find out the solution of your data. <coughs> and the one is sketched bar diagram. Sketch bar diagram also we are using uh, some cases, not for all cases. Some cases we are using this type of diagrams. So in here, how many variables are there, and how many? Uh, what is? Uh, percentage or you could say percentage or the numerical value is given. So in here you see that number of students in how many? 33, 35 and 30. Favorite sports ka how many? Na basketball, badminton and volleyball. How many girls? 16. How many boys? 22. That means how many data in here? One is total number of students 38, 35, 30. What are the sports? The one is basketball, one is basketball, what is volleyball. So in here, suppose that you see in your basketball. In a basketball, there are two types of data is given. One is 16 girls and 22 boys. So in here, total 38. So in here, you have to find out the double bar chart or double bar diagram. For basketball, two diagrams are there. For one for boys, one for girls. And another diagram is that. Suppose you have to mix up both two, girls and boys, then it should be total number of students. So in this figure, what happened? Now th three conclusions we can draw. Suppose the first diagram, basketball. First orange color. Orange color means it is representing the girls. And purple color. So it is representing what is the boys. If you are adding these two, representing total number of students. Yes or no? So in this case, what happened? Now one, two, and three, because three type of uh, play or sports name is given. One is basketball, one is badminton, and another one is volleyball. So three balls we can use, and data you are using, where data you are using, and directly you can put in your graph. So when you see the graph, from this graph, you can easily identify it. Yes, there are three play uh, game, one is basketball, one is badminton, one is volleyball. And girls' uh, number of students are, uh, that is 16. And boys are, uh, this is uh, 22. And total number of students are 38. So immediately you can calculate from the graph without see the tables. Yes or no? So this is very, very important. So multiple data sets, it is given. So generally you are using this type of graphs. So, case diagram is very, very important also. Yes or no? So, in this cases, so the listen, in here, this bar, this bar diagram, this bar diagram, and this bar diagram, multiple bar diagram. First of all, generally, we are not using more this diagram, line graph, and pie chart and sketches by the graph. These are very, very important for a researchers when you analyze your data. So these are called the graphical representation of the data. Then another one is that when you analyze the statistical analysis. Statistical analysis we are discussing the next class. Just I am giving the overview of the statistical analysis. So when you are repeating your data, in graphical method, then easily we can understand from these data sets. When we are going for analyze your data from your data set in the statistical methods, so at that time what happened? Now first we have to check it whether data is valid for the analysis or not. For that cases, first class I told you that data reliability and validity should be required. If data is not reliable, if the condition is not satisfied, or data is not valid, then we cannot go for statistical analysis. This is number one point. Number two point, what happened? Now, if your data is not valid, that means again, you have to collect your data. So now question is, we, which cases we can say that? data is reliable. 
So for that cases, we are using some techniques, reliability analysis or reliability test is there in your SPSS package or SPSS statistical uh, tools and uh, techniques. So we collect the data and use this data from these techniques and they have to give the solution that if your data set is 50% accepted, that means significance level is 50%. This is 50, 0, 0.50. Then data is eligible for analysis. But data is not good. Data is eligible for analysis. If the value by significance level more than 70 or 70 percent, data is good. If it is more than 90, data is very good. So always try to take collect the data. The data should be good or very good, then it will be appropriate for the analysis. Yes or no? Otherwise, it is very difficult to find out the solution. And number two, suppose that in the testing of hypothesis or level of testing or significance test level, which test generally you are using? Now, we are generally using the parametric test. T test also we can use through significant level of the significance of the data. In t-test, we can use how many data is significant, how many data is not significant. So at the time, what, how can you find out that? Now first you have to take this, those data we are collecting from the respondent, the data are hypothetical, it is true. And if a hypothetical it is true, then you have to test it. So how can you test it? Now when you test the data as a hypothesis, as for the hypothesis, so at that time, always we are taking the two hypotheses. Hypothesis is one and hypothesis two. What is hypothesis one? The collected data are significant. The hypothesis one. Collected data are not significant. Hypothesis two. So when you are testing your data, always you go for the null hypothesis. Why? The null hypothesis always accepted. If null hypothesis is not accepted, then we will go for the alternative hypothesis. What will be the alternative hypothesis in here? What is given? The data sets are not significant. If data are not significant, that means what happened? Either this is wrong, not significant, or data is not available. Anything is that? That means what happened? If data is rejected, that means you have to go for again for a table exam. If you are going for again for data class, then what you will do? Again, same procedure, you can take it. Again, you go for the data presentation. Again, editing, again, coding, again, classification, again, tabulation. Then only you can go for the reliability test. Either you can represent your data by graphical method or graphic method, or you can represent your data for the statistical analysis. Again, same procedure. Yes, this is your number one. So when you analyze your data, so the statistical techniques, so, so many techniques are available. So many techniques are available. One is statistical analysis. One is multidimensional scaling techniques. Yes or no? Sometimes other techniques also there. So you can use this one. So generally in your statistical techniques, what we will do, what we are doing this one in here. Now we are doing some parametric test and some non-parametric test. What is the parametric test? Generally T test and Z test, we are using the parametric test and other techniques are always non-parametric test. Remember this one. The non-parametric test, when you are printing your data or analyze your data after data processing, then there are two types of techniques we are using for the parametric test and other are non-parametric test. Parametric test was one, not T test, Z test. When the sum samples was, uh, this is, uh, what is uh, the low, low sample, small sample cases, less than 30, generally you are using the T test and more than 30, you are using the data test. But in statistical, uh, that is uh, SPSS. SPSS means statistical package for social science. In SPSS or we are testing your data always in the T test, not a Z test is there. And when non-parametric tests are there, so many tests are there, then generally, generally in your topics, chi-square test, then your um, analysis of variant test, yes or no? Then your factor analysis, cluster analysis, discrimination analysis, and cohesion analysis, and some multidimensional training techniques also there. Regression analysis, correlation analysis, so many analysis is there. We are using uh, for multidimensional scaling techniques also. Structural modeling techniques also we are using uh, for analyze your data. 
and this data, this when you are analyzing with this data, some techniques or rules and some techniques are there. When we are using which techniques and what is the level of significance? So many techniques are there, and less classes we are uh, discussing in uh, details we are discussing. And after that, your analysis or data, then you have to find out that whether your analysis are right or not. Those data you are taking, those data you are collecting from the respondents, after your data classification, then when you are going for analysis, your analysis is correct or not. How can you find out this correct or not? Now, as for your objectives, what objective says that? Your objective is that our quality education modification should be required. If your analysis is given not required, that means what happened? Your data set may be wrong or your data your data collected data from the respondents it may be invalid so for that case what you will do now you have to again redesign your questionnaire redesign of your research work and you collect your information after that again same process your data processing same method again editing again coding again classification again tabulation and again you have to go for the analysis analysis may be do in two cases either you can do for the graphical representation or you can go for the statistical analysis. So this process, this is the data process techniques and similar procedure you can use anywhere when you're doing your research work. Clear or not? So in your today topics we are discussing about your data processing, how data should be editing, how data will be coding, how data process classification, what will be the data uh, tabulation. Then after that, how to represent your data through the diagram basis or through the analysis basis. In diagram basis, what happened? Now we have to use so many diagrams, bar diagrams, pi diagrams, uh, line diagrams, so many diagrams are there. And for the statistical techniques cases, we can show your data in the uh, two different techniques we are using and we have to present it through the uh, quantitative methods. So this is the today topics and thank you, thank you for your study, thanks all.